In Anya Manahar, August and Vic, August and Spirit, Neve, Amen. Goro and Cherna Live, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You're very welcome as we join together virtually and in uh, physical presence here at the lovely cemetery of Monaster Boyce. You see the tower behind me and the high cross here. We're going to celebrate our Mass at the, the foot of the cross and no better place indeed to celebrate. Could I invite and congratulate and thank all of our viewers for tuning in. Um, this is such a difficult and different year for us all as we try to navigate the realities of the pandemic. So uh, our blessings of the graves can't continue as normal, but we do want to assure you that graves will be blessed this year, particularly to all of those who have lost loved ones in this last year since we last gathered in this uh, beautiful place. I'd like to thank the members of the Monaster Boys Cemetery Committee who are here um, uh, for representing all of you who cannot be here. Uh, I'd like to thank also uh, Philip Carter, who is our deacon. Uh, Philip has been with us many years now and will, uh, Philip has relatives buried in this graveyard. And I'd like to thank also Thomasina, who has uh, begun our Mass with that beautiful song, Building a City of God. That's what we're about in the Christian message. We're building that city of God for all of us. And of course, our loved ones are already there. They're in that city of God in heaven. And uh, please, God, uh, our prayers uh, will console them and help them. But more importantly, their prayers can help us. And we know that our loved ones who are in heaven are praying for us continually. So we're going to begin the Mass uh, with the blessing of water. As you, you know, we have um, prepared little vials of holy water. Uh, the water isn't blessed yet, but it will be blessed now by our deacon Philip. And uh, Philip and I will be going across the whole graveyard and blessing all the graves at the end of Mass. But these little bottles of water which have been prepared... Uh, by the cemetery committee um, will be available at the gate of Monaster Boy Cemetery for you to take when you arrive to visit your graves and please feel free to bless your graves and, and also take that water home with you um, this mass is Sunday mass for the 18th Sunday of ordinary time and as we listen to the words of the gospel and the scriptures later on we ask that the Lord will touch our hearts and help us truly to uh, build that city of God. I'll now hand over to Philip, our deacon, who will lead us in the penitential rite dash, the blessing of holy water. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us and on the graves here as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by this by his grace, to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty and ever-living God, who will that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body and so approach you with hearts made clean 
and worthily receive your salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And as it is our Sunday Mass, I invite you to recite with me the uh, words of the Gloria. On this beautiful morning, we praise God for all his blessings. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory to, of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. We pray your blessing, Lord, on all who are buried in this cemetery. May they receive the light of eternal life, and may the consolation of your grace be with all their loved ones as we bless their graves today. And we make this prayer through our Lord Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I'm delighted that we have two very willing volunteers to uh, lead us in the liturgy of the word. So I invite them to come forward and Thomasina will sing the psalm between the two readings. The first reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O come to the water, all you who are thirsty, though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money, and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me. Listen, and your soul will live. With you, I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favours promised to David. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Save us, O Lord, carry us back, rouse your power and come. Rescue your people, show us your face, bring us back. O shepherd of Israel, hear us, return and we shall be reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Nothing can come between us and the love of Christ, even if we are troubled or worried, or being persecuted, or lack food or clothes, or being threatened or even attacked. These are the trials through which we triumph, by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, Nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth or even any created thing 
can never come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus received the news of John the Baptist's death, he withdrew by boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But the people heard of this and leaving the towns went after him on foot. So as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd and he took pity on them and healed their sick. When evening came, the disciples went to him and said, This is a lonely place and the time has slipped by. So send the people away, and they can go to the villages to buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, There is no need for them to go. Give them something to eat yourselves. But they answered, All we have with us is five loaves and two fish. Bring them here to me, he said. He gave orders that the people were to sit down on the grass. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, raised his eyes to heaven and said the blessing. And breaking the loaves, he handed them to his disciples, who gave them to the crowds. They all ate as much as they wanted, and they collected the scraps remaining, twelve baskets full. Those who ate numbered about five thousand men, to say nothing of women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just when we lose someone, the one thing that is important to us is the compassion that we receive from others and the compassion that we receive from God. In the second reading, it talks about the love of God. Nothing, nothing can conquer the love of God. The other thing about this gospel that we get is the humanity of Jesus, so that Jesus understands how we feel. We see him as maybe as most human. He has suffered the loss of a close friend, John the Baptist. On top of that, Herod believes that, John, that Jesus is John the Baptist resurrected from the dead. Jesus knows that he is now under threat. With that in mind, he goes away to a quiet place, as he often did, to speak with his father. But the crowds turn up. A human reaction at this time might be a disappointment or even annoyance that he was going to be disturbed again. But what does he do? He reaches out in compassion and heals them and feeds them. So we have a God who understands us and has great compassion for us. But beyond that, he teaches us that the answer to fear, to any fear we have, even the fear of death, is love. And he gives us a promise as well about that, that when we love, when we make selfless acts of love, that his power is behind us so that our little acts of love, like the loaves and the fishes, will be magnified and will affect far more than we can ever imagine. And so when we follow Christ and we practice his compassion and love, we too can perform miracles. Amen.
And as we have done before uh, over the last number of weeks, uh, we recite the creed. Uh, I'm inviting you to say the Apostles' Creed. It's the uh, shorter and older version, and uh, it's a bit more punchier uh, for these days, I think. We, we say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And Deacon Philip talked about the little acts of compassion and one of the most wonderful acts of compassion that happens every year is the dressing of the graves, the blessing of the graves. People come to, in devotion to their loved ones who have died and uh, the graves here are absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. So uh, that's a wonderful act and I know that all those who are joining us on the video uh, will be either coming here later or will have been to the cemetery already. And uh, we thank you for your acts of, of compassion. And we also thank our cemetery committee for taking care of the graveyard so well. Every year the, the, there's a little bit of work done, a lot of work done, uh, but uh, particularly uh, it has the approval, uh, approval of the trees, I think, has helped a lot. So uh, well done to our cemetery committee. So let us pray. In today's gospel, as Deacon Philip told us, Jesus is moved to feed the crowds that come. We are reminded that we too are fed by Jesus the Eucharist that we will celebrate in just a few moments is the bread of his compassion freely given to us all. We are then challenged to feed our, feed our sisters and brothers. We are to be the Eucharist for each other and for the world. So let us in our prayers ask for the grace to respond wholeheartedly to his call. We draw close to the Lord, knowing that he opens wide his hands to grant our desires. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our uh, own Archbishop, Archbishop Eamon, his assistant Michael, and indeed all the priests and people who make up the church, and deacons, uh, that we as church may grow in an awareness of God's presence in and around us. May we be rooted in Christ, alive with his presence, and always be ready to transform, heal, build, and renew. Lord, hear us. For all in our world, we pray that real needs will be seen and acknowledged. May all world leaders, and particularly our own leaders here in Ireland, be filled with compassion and wisdom and integrity. May they work for the safety and protection of all people, and uh, may they be particularly caring of the poor and the marginalized who struggle for basic needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a sense of God at this time of pandemic. As Deacon Philip told us, Jesus retired to the quiet to mourn the loss of his cousin John the Baptist. We pray for quiet times each day, for an awareness of God in the stillness, especially at those times when our hearts are faithful, fearful, our lives are anxious, and our future is uncertain. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For an end to COVID-19. We pray for all who are suffering from this virus. We lift up to the Lord all who have died and those who grieve their loss, and particularly those who have died and buried in this cemetery over the last year. We also pray for frontline workers who tirelessly work to ensure the health and safety of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all that is not of God, we pray that God's compassion may penetrate all the hardness and bitterness in our world. As we break bread today in Jesus' name, we pray that we who have been touched by his compassion may become his heart and hands in our community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And for all in our parish community, we pray especially for the lonely, those who hunger for friendship, those who have lost heart or lost their way in life. 
May the Lord's Holy Spirit renew them. May they have a new sense of mystery and a new experience of God's loving presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You might have a prayer of your own that you would like to make at this time. Let's take a quiet moment to do so. And as always, we conclude with our prayers for the dead. I've already mentioned all those who are buried in this beautiful cemetery of Monaster Boyce. We pray for all those who have died in the last year since our last blessing of the graves. We pray for those whose relatives and friends have passed on and maybe uh, no one left to tend to their graves. We pray for all those who are still deeply mourned and missed. And we remember all our loved ones at this time and all who are buried in this cemetery. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. So I'm just going to ask uh, James and... Mark is going to come as well, yeah. There we go. Take the... Uh... Thank you. you take the... Gifts of bread and wine Gifts we've offered Fruits of Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accept the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice. Make of us an eternal offering to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. For your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. So with the angels, archangels, thrones and dominions and all the hosts and powers, we sing the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray sending down your blessing upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate here this morning the memorial of the death and resurrection of the Lord, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Amen, our bishop, Michael, his assistant, and all those who lead and serve your people. Remember your servants, the, those deceased who are buried in this graveyard, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in death may also be one with him in his resurrection. Indeed, we pray for all our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. And have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with Mary, the Blessed Virgin, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Aloysius, uh, St. Aloysius Gonzaga today, isn't it? Yes. Yes, yeah, St. Aloysius Gonzaga, whose feast is Saturday, and all the and saints, St. Saint uh of course, uh, our local saint here, Monaster Boyce, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. For those who are uh, in the same family, of course, you may sign this, give the sign of peace. For the rest of us, we offer a gesture to each other. So peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
a company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts. In your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. We pray particularly for the deceased who are buried in this graveyard, on this the blessing of the graves. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thank you, one and all. Thank you for coming along. Um, the sun didn't stay too long, unfortunately. Um, a lovely Irish summer, as usual. Um, and uh, I'm delighted and indebted indeed to all of you for your presence. To Thomasina, who has accompanied us all of the blessings of the graves. To Deacon Philip, who has been here today, uh, particularly for Monaster Boyce. To the, uh, our lovely readers, thank you so much. And to uh, our uh, cemetery committee who have done such a great job. F Deacon Philip and myself will be going to bless each of the individual graves now. And Thomasina will, uh, cover, will uh, bring, uh, help us to reflect and pray uh, with some lo lovely music. And we are all indebted to uh, Joe, Joe Finnegan, uh, for his lovely footage over the last couple of weeks. And also today, I'm sure uh, it'll be great to see this beautiful cemetery uh, in Philham once again. And I, I feel really privileged to be celebrating here just below uh, St. Murdoch's Cross. Uh, it's a fine, fine piece that has stood here for such a long time, of course. Um, history beside us and right, right in, our heart, in our midst. So we give thanks and praise to God for the, the blessings that are here. And we hope and pray that this blessing of the graves will help all who are mourning and uh, still in, in grief at home, who are watching our video, particularly those who have lost loved ones this year who were led to rest in this cemetery. We hope and pray that, that you will find consolation in your grief and that you will find that presence of the Lord that Deacon Philip spoke about in the gospel uh, that will be with you uh, now and always. Gurmila Mayagov, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let all who have nothing, let them come to the Lord with Except for the
come to the Let there 
speak.